Hi, my name's Ashley Maisko Bekrix and I'm here with the lovely Miss Jo Martin, who I'll be interviewing today. And we'll be discussing acting and just different tips that she has for anyone who wants to get into the industry. So my first question for you is, how did you get into the arts? I didn't do so much at school because I, I, believe it or not, I was actually really shy. And um, so I, I got really nervous about the process of have, having to put yourself out there to audition for the parts yeah. in school plays and, and I had a stammer. So that kind of uh, put me off even more because people would just be like, what, where are you going with your stammer? Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I used to just love it, you know, and uh, my mum would take me to shows here. Yeah. And, um, and then I uh, heard about a uh, summer thing they were having here. Mm -hmm. like a six week thing and uh, I jumped onto that. My mum kind of encouraged me and then I joined another youth theatre at the same time. So I was running, I was in two, you know. Busy. Yeah, and then, you know, I've kind of, I think I found my, my clan. Because people like, you might not know them, but they're, they're big in the game right now. Roger Griffiths, mm -hmm. um, Michael Buffon, Roger Griffiths is an actor. And uh, I think he's in EastEnders at the moment. Yeah, he okay. is. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Buffon runs uh, uh, one of the most famous black theatre companies in the UK, which is Talawa. Yeah. Yeah, he's the artistic director there. And he, but he used to act. Yeah. And uh, so we all used to do stuff together here. And yeah, so it was here, you know, while well, Philip Headley was here when I first started when oh. I was a little girl. Yeah, you might not know Philip Headley, but. I've seen his name actually. Yeah, you, of course yeah, you yeah. would. I yeah. mean, he's done so much yeah. for this building. He did so much for this building over the years and a uh, real champion of this building. Can you tell us about your first job at Stratford East? Professional job. Or any, it's up to you. you can... um, oh my God, I did everything when I was here because obviously I was doing youth theatre and then you'd start doing stuff, suddenly out doing a bit of usherette and getting a bit of money doing oh, the usherette. Yeah. I was up, Mark Bukowski was a guy who, who did the publicity here for years and I'd be up in the, he had a little office, it's not bigger than this chair, this office, <laughs> and there's about five of us in there and before everything went digital, we were stuffing envelopes, putting flyers in and letting people know what was going on, getting stuff out. So I did that. Oh my God, there so many different jobs I did here. And, uh, and then I got my first professional acting break when Philip said, oh, there's a play called El Dorado. So El Dorado yeah. and I had to, basically I was just serving soup. I think I had about four lines and I had to serve people soup in this scene. And trust me on that first night, soup was everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, everyone's looking at me like, you ain't, even, you ain't got nothing to do, why are you nervous? You got two lines, you got served the soup. Mm. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. It was, yeah. I felt pressure, yeah. I felt pressure. And then once I did that, I think my family realised, oh, she wants to do it professionally. Because before everyone was all encouraging, they said, oh, it's good, help me with my confidence mm. and help me with my stammer and all this kind of thing. And um, by the time my mum realised that it was serious, she, you know, things changed. I was going to ask, how was Stratford East back then, but I guess yeah. you've also- Oh, it was cold, yeah. it was dark. No, <laughs> no, be lovely. I, I'm sitting here and I'm remembering the nicest place for me was to sit up in the gods yeah. when they were taking a show. That's why I still, a lot of actors go, when they're taking a show, they hate it, it's boring, it's long. Mm. I love a tech. I, because it just brings me right back to here, just sitting up there in the gods and watching the directors, yeah. you know, making choices, ch scene changes, what, watching the, the stage crew doing their magic, mm. actors trying a few things, the sound cues that this, I mean, uh, it, it was like heaven to me sitting right up there. Now they had to hide because you weren't really allowed to be in. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd be sort of lying down up there and, yeah. and, and trying to be really quiet and making sure not too many of us came in there because the minute too many of us are in there, we're going to start making up noise and yeah. we get discovered. And I got thrown out lots, many times over the years, but <laughs> I always came back. I like that. I like that, actually. Just this whole idea of this being your home and you're back here. Yeah. Like even with all the amazing things that you've done, all the projects you've done, you're still back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is my roots. I wouldn't be an actor if it wasn't for Stratford East and you know, that's one of the strongest elements to, that helped me in my career. Do you know what I mean? And Philip Headley kind of pushed so hard. You know, I, I owe him and this building so much, so much. Wow. 
Yeah, and I'm just so glad that it, the legacy still continues, that we've got young people coming through here and doing stuff, you know. So where, where did you get the bug? Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, for me, it was watching Disney Channel. Oh. So it, it was like a typical story. You watch Disney Channel, you want to be on it. Um, but I guess I'd always been taught to like read loudly and articulate my words when I was younger. So I always, I guess, was performing in any situation I could. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I went to a youth theatre as well. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I think I just, I was, I was very much like, oh, I want to do TV. Like you said, mm -hmm. I want to do TV. Mm -hmm. That's, my, that's mm -hmm. my thing. But then yeah, yeah, yeah. I think definitely doing Stratford East this year, I was like, oh, no, there's nothing that compares to theatre. You mm. can't replicate that bug anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also, the, the, you know, when you think about, I mean, some theatre productions you'll have, like, say you've worked for the RSE, sometimes you'll have, like, 15 weeks or more to rehearse a part, so you really get to the, into the yeah. bones of a character. Mm. Generally, if we're at Stratford East or other theatres, you will get four or five weeks if we're lucky, mm. you know, but even so, that's a lot mm. compared to when you're stepping onto a TV or a film where nine times out of 10, you may, might have had a week's rehearsal or none. Yeah. And you just turn up, you've got to arrive at your performance and they'll, they'll tweak it and try and finesse it on the floor. You know, so you've got to do a lot of work before you, but whereas the collaboration when you're doing theatre of People giving an opinion about your character. People, the games you play, the, the, you know, how you explore, how deep you can get into the person you're playing mm. and how you get there. If you don't do theatre, I don't know how you make that happen when you do TV and films. So I think it's really good grounding to do theatre if it's only just for the character work alone. Do you have any advice for black women and girls who are starting out in the industry? Oh my. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I always say, which is a bit blunt and a bit like, if you really want to do it, you will do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the bottom line, because when everything, and it still is, there's obstacles that are always going to be there. Mm. And in this game, whether you're black or white, the rejection, the fact that only, what's the percentage? That, I mean, they say that only 5% um, of us are working at any given time. Yeah. I mean, it's a really crazy statistic. Mm. You think, we, we must be mad. But well, we are. We are. <laughs> you know, we're like, this is going to be different for me. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. But my thing was, my mum used to say, oh, you're going to dead hungry. You're not going to have, I'll never be hungry. Mm -hmm. Because my thing was, I will always act, whether I've got to do it in my front room and do something and do it, or I'm doing it on a big stage or I'm doing it, I'm mm -hmm. always going to do it because it gives me life. Yeah. You really have to be persistent. Yeah. And it's harder for us as black women, yeah. women in general. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And for a black woman, mm. it's harder still. So you really got to know that you, you want this for more than, oh, someone wants my autograph. Yeah. <laughs> that is not going to fix you. The doors are opening and I'm standing on the shoulders of many uh, mm. black actors that came before me. When I came into business, I was looking at older women like um, Donna Kroll, like um, Anne Mitchells. Uh, she's a white actress, but she's, she's a soldier. She's a veteran. Um, mm. Um, people like Ellen Thomas, uh, Mona Hammond, you look up these people, I'm standing on them. They, they cracked the door. You know, I saw someone, I saw Donna Crowell play Cleopatra, the first black woman I saw play Cleopatra, even though she's supposed to be a woman of colour, mm. you know. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, okay, <laughs> then. Um, you know, and I'm hoping that me of my generation, me, the Sharon D. Clarks, the you know, Sharon Duncan Bruce. I mean, there's so many of us mm. um, who are trying to crack the door for you guys yeah. and leave it open. Yeah. Well, I don't even know if it's open, but we're leaving the crack. <laughs> it helps. That you can kick on through. Yeah. You know, and trying to pick, you say choose your parts because you get, you know, to try and, um, broaden the narrative that we're not always just the best friend or the mm. um that our stories don't matter we're trying to get our stories out there which is why so many people are writing i write as well and part of why i wrote the first play I wrote, which was again encouraged by philip headley which mm. we put on here at stratford he's called um shoot to win yeah but a netball team and that was 
when Philip said to me, I think he can write a play, <laughs> the thing he said was, there aren't many plays where it's just women. Wouldn't it be interesting? Because he said to me, what, what was a pl play that kind of stuck with me when I was younger, when I was here? I remember seeing a play here by Nell Dunn called um, Steaming, set in a sauna bath, and it was all women. Beautiful. Mm. I couldn't, I've never seen a play with just all women, you know? And yeah. so that kind of, so then we, start, we sat down with my writing partners, uh, Tracy Daly and Josephine Melvin. We were like, what are we gonna, where are we gonna put these women? We had all these characters that we wanted to share the, their stories. And then we put it on here and it that went really well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it went really well. That's really amazing. Doctor Who. All right. So not only are you the first black doctor, but the first mm. black female doctor. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an iconic moment for young black girls who are watching mm -hmm. their screens and mm -hmm. seeing that for the first, especially mm -hmm. for me. Like I've growing up, I didn't see many people that looked like me. So to see that is so powerful. You're going to trigger me. Stop. No, <laughs> no, but it really, it really is. So, I mean, knowing that you're doing that and you're paving the way for those future girls who are going to be hopefully following in your footsteps. Mm, please. What, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on the way that the industry is moving in terms of diversity? Do you feel like we're going to see more of that? Yes, we are going to see more yeah. of that. And I, and I think it was, um, I think the whole Black Lives Matter movement, when that happened, it was timely. It has touched every industry, even though some people are kind of fake about it. You know, everyone was coming mm. up with their statements. We're going to stand by and we're going to this and that just to sell more trainers or just to do this or that. But some of it is stuck. And in our industry, a lot of the things that they may have got away with, even up until five years ago, no one ain't standing for it right now. Yeah. You know, as well as the whole Me Too movement. Mm. We ain't standing for it yeah. no more. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I do believe, I mean, because I thought it was a really, um, well, it's not brave, it's, it's, it's the right thing. They did the right thing casting me. No, 100%, they did. I was going to say, oh, they're so brave and they were so, no, they did the right thing. They did. I mean, because you, you number one, to choose somebody, a middle-aged actress, number one, uh, to choose an actress who's not like a size eight, you know what I mean, a breast. To do this was quite something, you know. And so that's when I knew the tide is a changing. Mm. And I'm a dark skinned sister at that. Yeah. You know, because more times, even, you know, black, as you know, we come in all shades. Yeah. But they, they tend to favor our lighter sisters. Mm -hmm. They're still so having a, a, a warm time, if you know what I mean. It ain't mm. all, all roses for them either. Yeah. But they might get in the door quicker than we might. Yeah. You know, and uh, it still distresses me when I watch some of the MTV videos and I see all these rappers and I'm like, why don't you mix up the girls? Mm. Why? You know what I mean? Let's, let's celebrate all of us, the beautiful light-skinned sisters, the dark-skinned sisters, yeah. the mid-brown sisters. Let's have it all. Yeah. We're glorious. And as you say, as a, as a young black mm. actor yourself, um, it's trying to create work or getting with like-minded people yeah. that our stories are going out there, which is another reason why that play was written and why I still write. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to see black actresses always just being, not having the story. I don't know nothing about them, but I know everything about their white friend. You know, I don't want to see you always being the best friend or the nurse. If I tell you, if I had a penny for how many nurses I've played. So it was nice to actually go on Holby yeah. and be the, when I first arrived, I was CEO. But yeah. then she, everything went wrong because she's an alcoholic and she's not CEO anymore. But she was CEO she was. for a whole year. Yes. And that's know. what matters. And with locks. Yeah. Because I know there was kind of talk about, you know, our black women in our hair, uh, digging yours, the natural thing. I've got nothing against weaves and all the extensions yeah. and all the different looks, but I want the variety on the show. I don't want to turn on the TV. Every time I see a black actor, they've got to have on some thing you know unless yeah. it's you know it, if it's very specific to the character like one of the characters in my play if she hasn't got a weave it wouldn't be right yeah right but um i like that i was able to play the ceo and i'm a neurosurgeon with locks yeah and they're like oh but would she have would she well we'll start it here because in jamaica we've got neurosurgeons with locks yeah in gambia you've got neurosurgeons with locks exactly you know yeah 
yeah it's it's very black hair is something that is very what's the word i guess political yeah <laughs> it, it is it is and it's something that it, it means a lot to us and i i don't think everyone realizes how um that topic itself can be quite emotional for us of course yeah i mean you go into makeup rooms still yeah you go in there with your afro hair move my locks because sometimes you don't have no black makeup artist there you're you you're othered in that chair yeah because people are like oh, oh does it do you know mm -hmm. now things have got better there are so many uh amazing black makeup artists and amazing white makeup artists who know about black hair they've learned but a lot of the time they don't learn about it at the schools that they're training mm. they're not taught about black hair or black yeah. skin i fight for the right for us to have anything we want done to our hair but please don't disrespect our natural hair and please try and champion it and, and have some natural hairstyles on the screen as much as we can to encourage those little girls. When I was at school, I'm watching people on TV. I've got to be putting cardigans on my head because I'm going, oh, to so make my hair go like this. When can I put some chemicals on it to make my hair straight? When can you straight, mummy, I want to flick my hair. I want to do it like this. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do it like this, <laughs> so, which is, you know, but I'm, I'm cured. I, I, I had my natural hair for years. And in yeah. fact, from I had my locks, me not stop work. So I don't know what it is. I know yeah. it's still hard because people still talk about it in a negative fashion. Your yeah. beautiful Afro hair, mm -hmm. my natural locks. They will talk about it in very negative fashions, yeah. but um, I'm plowing through with it. As many parts as I can play with the locks, I'm like, so when we got Doctor Who, I was like, mm -hmm. nobody talked him but no wig. Yeah, yeah. It's Afro, and if it's going to be a wig, it's going to be an Afro wig, yeah. like Angela Davis. Yeah, that was lovely. I'm going to definitely take on board everything you've said. Nice meeting you. You too, you too. Good Thank luck. You. I see you out there. Might be playing Thank your you. mother. No, well, actually, let's be serious. Uh, sisters. Exactly, exactly. Black mother. Exactly. I'm your sister. Sisters, exactly. Mm. Twins. Same Twi age. <laughs> <laughs> now you've gone too far. <laughs>